Welcome to Lesson 10.13, Part 2. In this video, we'll be exploring some multiple choice questions related to the radius and interval of convergence. If you're not familiar with the concept of radius and interval of convergence, I do have a separate video where I introduce that topic and go over a couple of examples. Let's jump into some multiple choice questions. The power series from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n times x minus 2 to the power of n converges conditionally at x equals 4. Which of the following must be true? A few things to note about this specific problem. Since I am working with a power series and I see that I have an x minus 2 to the power of n, that means that my center is going to be c equals 2. Because when we have x minus c, whatever value got plugged in for c, that's our center of the power series. That's also the center of our interval of convergence. So if I'm sketching out what my interval of convergence is, it's going to be centered at x equals 2. Now I was also given that this power series converges conditionally at x equals 4. If it converges conditionally, that means that that's probably going to be an endpoint. So I'll have 4 right up here as my endpoint. We know that it's going to converge for x equals 4. Now I know that the radius has to have the same distance on both sides. So if I added 2 from the center to get to my top endpoint, I need to subtract 2 from the center to get to my bottom endpoint, which is 0. Now recall that at the endpoints, you don't know what's going on with the series. Even though it's an endpoint, that doesn't necessarily mean that it converges at that endpoint. The series could converge or diverge at x equals 0. So this is an endpoint, but we don't know whether this, whether this makes the series converge or diverge. And just because this endpoint converges doesn't necessarily mean that the other endpoint converges. Therefore, we can eliminate answer choices A and B. We, it is not guaranteed that the series diverges at x equals 0 or that it converges conditionally at x equals 0. Now, let's think about whether we know that the series would converge absolutely at x equals 1. If we are within this interval from 0 to 4, and we know that our series is converging absolutely, we can make the conclusion that the series converges absolutely at x equals 1. Because x equals 1 is right here, and we know that our series is going to converge when we're between 0 and 4. Therefore, choice C is correct. Let's also take a look at why choice D is not correct. We know that the series does not diverge at x equals 1 because x equals 1 is within our interval of convergence. The radius of convergence of the power series from n equals 0 to infinity of 2n factorial times x to the power of n over n factorial is, that's what we have to figure out. Let's start by using the ratio test here. If we just go through the process for finding the radius and interval of convergence, we will probably get to the point where we can identify the radius, and we may not even have to work through this all the way. So we'll take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. a sub n plus 1, we're going to have 2n plus 2 factorial. And notice that that's not just 2n plus 1 because we had to plug in an n plus 1 for this n and then distribute the 2. So we have 2n plus 2 factorial times x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Then we'll multiply that by the reciprocal of this original a sub n, which is n factorial over 2n factorial times x to the power of n. Then we can do some cleanup here. 2n plus 2 factorial over 2n factorial is going to be 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. Because if we had 2n plus 2 factorial, that would be 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial, the rest of the terms. And if that's over 2n factorial, these 2n factorials will cancel, and this will be what we are left with. So we have 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. That took care of these two parts. Then let's look at the x to the power of n plus 1 over x to the power of n. That's just going to produce a single x in the numerator. For the n factorial over n plus 1 factorial, that means that we have an n plus 1 in our denominator. Then we can evaluate this. If we're plugging in an infinity or thinking about what happens when we plug in large numbers for n right here, 2n times 2n, just focusing on the terms with the largest magnitude, that would be 4n squared. And if we have something like 4n squared over a singular n right here, 4n squared is greater in magnitude than n. So we're going to wind up with infinity here. So if we have that this is always going to be equal to infinity or an infinitely large number, that means that our limit is always going to be greater than 1. And when the limit is greater than 1, that means that, the, that our series diverges. There is, however, one value where our series is not going to diverge. And that would be at x equals 0, our center. Because if we plug in a 0 right here, we know that this would be equal to 0. We can also see up here that our center is equal to 0 based on this equation. And we know that a power series always converges at its center. So if this is the only location where our series is going to converge, we know that the radius would be equal to 0. 
because we can't move any distance away from x equals zero and still have the series converge. This is the only value for which the series converges. Therefore, choice A is correct. The interval of convergence of the series from n equals zero to infinity of x plus four to the power of five n over n times 32 to the power of n is, and then that's what we are trying to find. For finding the interval of convergence with a power series, we're going to use the ratio test. We'll take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. For a sub n plus 1, we'll need to plug in an n plus 1 everywhere that we see an n right up here. So we'll have x plus 4 to the power of 5n plus 5, plugging in an n plus 1 and then distributing the 5, and that's all over n plus 1 times 32 to the power of n plus 1. Then we'll multiply that by the reciprocal of our original term, which is like dividing by our original a sub n. So that's times n times 32 to the power of n over x plus 4 to the power of 5n. Then we can simplify this. x plus 4 to the power of 5n plus 5 over x plus 4 to the power of 5n. The 5n's will cancel and we'll be left with an x plus 4 to the power of 5 in the numerator. We'll also have an n left in the numerator because that's not going to cancel with anything. And for this 32 to the power of n over 32 to the power of n plus 1, that means that we have a 32 to the power of 1 or just a 32 in the denominator. So let's see, we've taken care of this term, this term, this term, this one, and this one. So we just have an n plus 1 left in the, de in the denominator. Now if we think about evaluating this limit, the limit as n approaches infinity of this portion, the n over n plus 1, that's going to approach 1 because we have a term with the same magnitude in the numerator and denominator. So we'll really have a 1 and then what's left is the absolute value of this x plus 4 to the power of 5 over 32. If we're trying to make our series converge, we know that this expression needs to be less than 1 because if our limit is less than 1, that means that the series converges. Now we need to solve this inequality. To solve that, we'll say negative 1 is less than x plus 4 to the power of 5 over 32 is less than positive 1. Then to solve, we'll multiply everything by 32. So we have negative 32 is less than x plus 4 to the power of 5 is less than a positive 32. And then we'll need to take the fifth root of all of these sides to cancel out to the power of 5 right there. So the fifth root of negative 32, that would be negative 2. Then we'll have our x plus 4 left in the middle, and the fifth root of positive 32 is a positive 2. Last step is that we subtract 4 from each of these, so we're left with negative 6 is less than x is less than negative 2. But which one of these is it? This looks very similar to both choice A and choice B. The thing is, though, we don't know whether this series converges when x is actually equal to negative 6 or negative 2, so we don't know whether it's A or B. I'm not going to test negative 2 as an endpoint because I already know that that one's going to make my series diverge because these are the only two options they gave me. We don't have something that says x is less than or equal to negative 2. We only need to decide whether the series converges when x is equal to negative 6. So we'll test x equals negative 6. So instead of x plus 4, I'll write negative 6 plus 4 or negative 2 to the power of 5n and that's over n times 32 to the power of n. Then we can simplify this a little bit. We can take negative 2 and bring that power of 5 inside the parentheses. Negative 2 to the power of positive 5 is going to produce a negative 32. So we have negative 32 to the power of n over n times a positive 32 to the power of n. Then we can simplify this further. This is equal to the series from n equals 0 to infinity of and then negative 32 to the power of n over positive 32 to the power of n. That's just going to produce a negative 1 to the power of n on top and that's over n. Now, if we just had a plain 1 over n, that series would diverge. That is the harmonic series. But because we have this negative 1 to the power of n on top, that is going to make our series converge by the alternating series test. Remember, the alternating series test states that if our non-alternating portion of the series is approaching 0, which it is as we plug in larger and larger numbers for n, and if it's always decreasing, then the series is going to converge. So this series does, in fact, converge by the alternating series test. This means that at x equals negative 6, our series does converge, so we need to take that little equal sign underneath there. Now, if we were on a free response question, we would also want to test whether the series converges at x equals negative 2. But because our only options have x is less than negative 2 and don't force us to decide about negative 2, we can just pick choice B and move on. 
Consider the power series from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n times x minus 3 to the power of n. It is known that the series diverges at x equals 1, converges conditionally at x equals 2, converges absolutely at x equals 3, diverges at x equals 4, and diverges at x equals 5. What is the interval of convergence for the power series? Since we have an x minus 3 right here, I know that my center is going to be equal to 3. And it also gave me that my series converges absolutely at x equals 3, which makes a lot of sense because we know that a series must converge at its center. So I'm just going to sketch out this on a number line right here. So at 3, we know that the series is converging absolutely. Then we know that the series converges conditionally at x equals 2. If we have the series converging conditionally, that means that x equals 2 is probably our endpoint. So then it makes sense that the series diverges at x equals 1, because that is outside our interval of convergence. If we went one unit down from our center to get to this endpoint, we need to go one unit up from our center to get the other endpoint. So it says that the series diverges at x equals 4. Don't let that confuse you, because we can't have a series that diverges at its endpoint. It just means that x equals 4 would not be included in the interval of convergence. And then we also know that the series diverges at x equals 5, which makes sense because we are then out of our interval of convergence. So this right here would be our interval of convergence from 2 to 4. Now, since our series converges at x equals 2, we know that 2 is going to be included in the interval. So we would have 2 is less than or equal to x is less than, and we don't use that equal underneath here because we know that our series diverges at our other endpoint. So we have that is less than 4. Then we can convert this to interval notation pretty easily, and that matches answer choice B. What is the radius of convergence of the series from n equals 0 to infinity of x minus 5 to the power of 3n over 2 to the power of n? Let's start by trying to find the interval of convergence, and along the way, we will probably get something that helps us find the radius of convergence. So we'll use the ratio test here. We'll say the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n a sub n plus 1 is going to be equal to x minus 5 to the power of 3n plus 3, putting in an n plus 1 for the n right there, and that's over 2 to the power of n plus 1. Then we'll multiply that by the reciprocal of our original a sub n, so times 2 to the power of n over x minus 5 to the power of 3n. Then we can do some more simplifying. This is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of then we take a look at this x minus 5 to the power of 3n plus 3 over x minus 5 to the power of 3n. The 3n's would cancel, and we'd be left with x minus 5 to the power of 3 in the numerator. And in the denominator, we'll have a 2, because 2 to the power of n over 2 to the power of n plus 1 makes a 2. There's no place for us to plug in the n equals infinity in here, because we don't have an n right here. So if this is equal to the absolute value of x minus 5 to the power of 3 over 2, that needs to be less than 1 in order to make our series converge. Then to solve this inequality, what we do is we say negative 1 is less than x minus 5 to the power of 3 over 2 is less than positive 1. Then we can start solving this inequality. We multiply both sides by 2, so we'll have negative 2 is less than x minus 5 cubed is less than 2. Then we take the cube root of all sides. And we have the cube root of negative 2 is less than x minus 5 is less than cube root of 2. Finally, I'll add 5 to all sides. And this would be my interval of convergence. Because it's only asking me for the radius, I don't need to test the endpoints in this case. I just have to figure out how far away did I have to go from my center to get from the center to this or from the center to this. So I know that my center in this case is going to be x is equal to 5 because we have x minus 5 to the power of 3n. So we know that c is equal to 5. That means that we had to go the cube root of 2 units above 5 to get to our top boundary, and we had to go the cube root of 2 units below 5 to get to this bottom boundary. Therefore, we know that our radius is going to be equal to the cube root of 2. So choice D is correct. The power series from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n times x plus 7 to the power of n converges at x equals negative 2. Which of the following must be true? Based on this power series, I know that my center is going to be c equals negative 7, because plugging in a negative 7 means that I have x minus c, or x minus negative 7, produces an x plus 7. So if my center is at negative 7, I'm going to make a little number line here to help me. At negative 7, that's my center, so I know that my series is converging. Now I also know that the series converges at x equals negative 2. So over here at negative 2, we also know that the series is converging right there. We don't necessarily know if this is an endpoint. 
it's possible that negative two is an endpoint and that our series is converging at that endpoint, or it's possible that our endpoint isn't until negative one or zero or positive one or some number further to the right. So we do know that our series is going to be converging when we are anywhere between negative two and negative 12. However, we don't necessarily know if our series is converging or diverging at x equals negative 12. It's possible that we have an endpoint at negative two that is converging and an endpoint down at negative 12 that is not converging. So this could be an endpoint. It could be converging. It could be diverging. But we know that we're going to be converging all the way up until we hit negative 12 at least. So within this interval, but not necessarily including negative 12, we know that our series is going to converge. So let's see, do we know that the series converges at x equals negative 12? No, it's possible that this is our endpoint and that this diverges. Do we know that the series diverges at x equals negative 15? Down at negative 15, that would be down here on our number line, we don't necessarily know that our series diverges at x equals negative 15 because it's possible that our endpoints are way, way, way beyond this. We only know that our series converges when x equals negative two. So it's possible that our endpoint is somewhere around five, which would make our other endpoint much lower than negative 15. So we don't know that our series diverges at x equals negative 15. We don't know that the series diverges at x equals negative 12 either. Remember, we don't know the behavior of the series at x equals negative 12. D says the series converges at x equals negative 11. This we do know because negative 11, that is definitely within the interval of convergence, even if our series converges beyond this. So choice D would be the correct answer. We don't know that the series converges at x equals negative one because it's possible that, the, that our series is diverging at x equals negative one if negative one is our other endpoint. If the power series from n equals zero to infinity of a sub n times x minus one to the power of n converges at x equals four and diverges at x equals negative four, which of the following must be true? With these types of problems, I really like to sketch out a little number line so that I can see what's happening. So at x equals one, which I know is gonna be my center, since x minus c, they plugged in a one for c right there, I know that my series will converge at my center. Now I also know that the series converges at x equals positive four. So down here at positive four, I will say this converges. Now this could be a convergent endpoint. So it could be an endpoint, but we're not sure. Since this is a possible endpoint, but we definitely know that this is converging, we can also go three units to the left of negative one. So down here at negative two, this is a possible endpoint, but we definitely know that our series is going to converge when we are greater than negative two, not necessarily equal to negative two, but when we are within this interval, our series is definitely going to be converging. But this is another one where it could be an endpoint. We don't necessarily know whether an endpoint converges or diverges. Therefore, that means that choice one is not correct. It is not necessarily true that the series converges at x equals negative two, because it's possible that x equals four is our endpoint, and this is a convergent endpoint. So our other endpoint, that could be a divergent endpoint. We don't know. Number two says the series converges at x equals negative one. That is true, because negative one is definitely within this window of convergence. So we'll say, yes, choice two is correct. Choice three, the series diverges at x equals six. Let's take a look at this other information that they gave us. It says that our series diverges at x equals negative four. So down here at negative four, this diverges. Now this means that maybe our endpoint is somewhere between negative two and negative four, like maybe our endpoint is negative three, and then our series is diverging everywhere after that. But it's also possible that negative four is a divergent endpoint. So that's the other thing that we have to think of. Now to get from one to negative four, we had to subtract five. So let's add five on this side to see what our other possible endpoint would be. So over at six, it's possible that this is our other endpoint. If negative four was our endpoint, we could say that negative six, that's, that's a possible endpoint too. However, at these endpoints, we don't know whether the series converges or diverges. We would have to test that individually in the series. Therefore, choice B is correct. We only know based on this information that the series converges at x equals negative one.